Thank you for joining us again on Diaspora Lounge. It's reality versus um, solutions. And we're specifically talking about ignoring red flags in relationships. Because during the week, we saw a photograph of someone who nearly butchered his girlfriend or wife. I don't know what that was. To the point where the lady was bleeding and in the hospital. And I've always wondered myself why people would even find themselves in relationships like this. Let me bring on my panelists. Join us in the conversation if you're able to. It's happened to you. Um, help us to understand from your from the from the <clears throat> POV of someone who has actually experienced this. And let's see what you've learned and how you are doing different from what you learned. Because that's what these conversations are about. Learning how to do better to get better out there. <laughs> It's easy to know that this is something that's going to happen if I remain in this relationship and if I carry on forward. And so um, I used to come actually with an attitude of how could you choose this? But I recently, not well, not too long ago, I realized that what is common sense to me, things like this, isn't really common sense to everyone else. Same way other people know certain things that are common sense to them and it's not common sense to me. So let's even talk about this thing. And for some people have said, well, there's no way you can know until it happens. People change. And I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Please let me know where I'm going wrong, where they are going. Let me hear from you, Aki. I don't know okay. what's happening with your connection, Aki. Oh, dear. Okay. It's still doing the same thing. It's fine. <laughs> Well, the I concerning what the topic of the day, um, we need to understand that uh, some of these things, some of these issues, they actually begin from different different channels. There are there are people who have seen the sign of abuse, even during. Let's let's talk about the people who are married now, as in who are married and, and they are going through such an experience. They, some of them have seen the sign even from courtship when they were going out with the, with the opposite, uh, with the partner. Whether it may, because I know there are, there, are females oh, yeah. that are, there are females that abuse their partners and there are males oh, yeah. that abuse their partners. So, you know, so they, some, in some situations, they've actually seen the handwriting on the wall. They have been, they, we, they witnessed it. So some of them hope that or wish that they could change the person because of uh, the level of or how much love they have for the person or how much love or how much affection the person has shown towards them when they are not behaving in such a manner. Right. That's on one side. Then you have people who actually are more like victims because those are the ones I'll call victims. Uh, through fault of theirs, of not being able to read meanings into certain actions that are not finalized. You understand me? You understand? So, and also through, you know, what I'll call bad luck or change in personality. So those are the people who find themselves, who never went through such uh, situations in their, in their relationship, in their courtship. And a few years into their marriage, they find themselves in such a situation. And those are the ones that are shocked. Those are the ones that are slightly excusable. When I say excusable, is with, with the inverted commas. So you have, that, you have that second set on one side. But uh, overall, the golden rule should be, if you are in any relationship, one where you cannot speak the, your truth, where you cannot communicate, where you are abused verbally, physically, you really don't have any business in that relationship. So if such a thing is happening, and maybe you try to address it once or twice or thrice, for your own safety and your life, life is more important than any, the sanctity of life is more important than anything. For your own safety and my uh, well-being, 
uh, physical, uh, psychological, and uh, even spiritual well-being. It is better for you to begin to see your exit plan or make your exit plan out of such relationship, whether it is still at the courtship level or whatever, or whether it's already in a marriage level, whichever level it is, nothing is important enough to threaten your existence, to threaten your peace, to threaten your safety. So that, that's my take on it. But I, I recognize that people find themselves in different situations. Many people happen into these situations by different channels and different means and different circumstances. So we cannot actually lump all of them together. Some are more victims than more of victims than others. Some some other people actually decided to commit near suicide. Okay. Yeah. I guess I should rephrase my intro then, mm -hmm. because um, perhaps you shouldn't get into the ones that are surprised, that are, that are actually genuinely surprised when this kind of behavior starts to play out. Maybe what I should... No, you, you, no, no, Uzo, you're right. See, uh, every situation has a beginning and an end. Whether you, you, got in, you saw it before marriage or you saw it in marriage, <laughs> nothing is still more important than your life. So the moment you see it in the marriage, that means your experience is just starting. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, so good you enough. are right. There's nothing wrong in your in your intro. Good enough. Okay, easy. Um, I guess, okay, this is what I think um, may, this is the way I think may be more helpful for, for us, for us to learn and for, for others. Like when when we notice this type of thing, when we're not in a relationship, it's, it's um, I mean, it's common sense that you withdraw and do not go further in the relationship. But what if now, it doesn't mean that when you're married, you're still stuck, right? It doesn't mean that you're stuck. But the problem with that is that maybe the other avenues you would have had to escape to will no longer be open to you because you're now married. For instance, um, you've left your, let's say it's a, it's a Nigerian woman, who's left her uh, family and um, maybe she's not able to now go back to live with her family or her siblings, right? Or she doesn't want to do that or something like that. Or maybe the man is, she's scared, he's dangerous. She's scared that if she attempts to leave, she's risking herself. So let's say we have this kind of idea. How do you even make sure that you don't end up in something like that, where you're now stuck with a man who, when you now want to leave, because he's displayed you the first time, you now want to leave, then he, you are in danger. So that's what we should talk about. Let's talk about how people can avoid, yeah. How can people avoid getting themselves with this type of people? Maybe it's a woman who is even at this. Point. So I'm sorry that I, I guess I'm surprising you now with the twist. No, 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 okay. It, it, it's okay. It's okay. Ezzy, are you are you are you good? Is are you able to speak? Okay, let me if she's not ready, let me let me go on. My my take my take on this uh, basically is I want us to think about our, our kids, yeah, our younger ones, our nieces and nephews. How can we help them to, yeah. to prevent this to for, avoid it? First and, okay. first and foremost. Oh, sorry. Okay. First and foremost, uh, first and foremost, I will say that. Uh, we should train children, our children, our nephews, our nieces. We should train them in understanding and differentiating between love and common sense. I know a lot of common sense is lost in the process of being in love. Mm -hmm. But if we can raise them, you understand me, to have emotional intelligence. Do you understand? Where they can love. They can have affection, they can have feelings towards someone and still be able to think with their brains. For every, for every person, every situation where, especially let's even limit it to relationships, there are obvious signs. Let, see, relate, uh, courting or relationships, are not, not all of them are supposed to lead to marriage. That's why they are courtship. So you understand me? So, before you get married, you could have gone out with five, six 
even seven people. And in that process, you will see behavioral signs. Even if you are not taught anything at home, but it's good for us to teach people coming after us. So you have behavioral signs eh, that will show you that this person is actually tended towards violence. Because it's violence that we're talking about now. We're not even talking about verbal abuse. We're talking about pure, simple violence. You understand? So you will see attributes, characteristics, behaviors that tend towards somebody who is likely to physically abuse you. If you can just try and separate a little common sense from whatever feeling of love you have towards the person. Because the number one cardinal thing is that someone who loves you would not even abuse you. If you have that, if, you, if you're able to instill that in the minds of young ones, the moment they see that sign, they will take to their feet or they will take to their heels rather. Do you understand me? So it is one, they, you must, if you establish that in their mind that no one who says it, no matter, how, even if they say it a hundred times in a day, if they can lift up their hands and abuse you physically, do you get that that person does not love it? That love is only on the on is only a lip service. If you can put that in their mind, then their senses are awake when they see signs that tend towards that. That's my that. But there are many things to say concerning. But let me let easy uh um have our own contribution because we're trying to get to her then easy easy, easy. i think it's delayed okay oh. i can hear you now okay sorry um i think she may be frozen yeah, she is. She is okay. Oh, anyway, yeah. so I was going to go. I, I didn't. I wanted that to come in, but basically, that is the number one uh, lesson, or let me say, um, uh, thing we want to impute in the young ones as they grow. Nobody that loves you will raise their hand against you. Beautiful. All right. So I, I think my apologies, please. Sorry, my network is really messing up today. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah we can. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear half of what you said. It was really breaking up. But um, you're right, Akin. You're totally right. In fact, I, I don't think there's more we can do, you know, or see. The signs are always there, you know. It might not be there at the beginning because, you know, as the relationship is progressing, some people seem to be so lovey-dovey. But I believe that some... Where I've, I've seen a relationship that was so good, but there were control issues. And as an outsider, you stand and look at it, but sometimes the, the image we have or in our heads about what we want, you know, the superficial things we look out for tend to make us not to see the red flags, but they are always there. Someone that was raised genuinely to be loving and kind and considerate cannot wake up overnight to be violent. You know, there is no just the signs will gradually come. It can be with shut up when you're talking, it can start with verbal abuse. Little, 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 little things. It can come with control issues. Can you still hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can. We can. Okay. So it can come with little, little control issues. But the truth is, sometimes we're delusional, just like the topic says. You know, sometimes it's just the sweet nothings people hear. You know, you just want it to be a smooth ride all through. But the truth is that there are so many things you need to look out for. It's not just the I love you and the roses and the flowers and the chocolates and the outings and all that and the happily ever after. There are discussions that should happen long before then. And from this discussion, just like I can say, the dating period, the courtship period, it doesn't mean automatically you're married. It's a learning process. It's a time for you to get to know your partner, your spouse to be. So during this period, even if you're not going to get married, even if it's just, you know, a relationship, a romantic one, along the line, there are discussions you should have with someone. And from there, you can deduce where this person's mindset is. Who is this person? 
what triggers him or her, you know, what excites him or her, to what extent do they get when they're excited, in quotes, these are, the signs are always there. If we can open our eyes and then teach the upcoming ones, it mustn't be your direct child. It can be the girl being abused down the road that you see in an abusive relationship. There are things, there are ways you can talk to them. You don't need to get fully involved, but it's there. Someone doesn't just wake up overnight and hate you. No matter the voodoo we want to call it in Africa, you know, it doesn't just, they don't just snap. It's not like a light switch that goes on and off. When the signs keep coming, it is time to ask yourself questions. Is this what I can live with? Is this where I want to be? You know, how is this going to be progressive or will it go down? Definitely we always keep, you know, coming up and coming up. If he can slap you for not having food ready, he can kick you for not having the bed made. So ask yourself these questions along the line. And then even if it's not happening to you, it's time to look at other people's case studies and enlighten your younger ones. Unfortunately, or rather fortunately, I don't know who we tend to use in our society, it seems like, you know, the female are always in a more abusive relationship. That doesn't mean the males are not, but the percentage of females in abusive relationship to men are more. So it's time to look at the girl child. You know, we just had the International Girl Day. This is time to bring these discussions out in the open. The era of our parents was an era of hush hush. Don't worry, keep it in, keep it in. It becomes a top secret of the family, you know. He will change, pray about it. But this era is time to enlighten the girl child. Even if it's not happening in our home, these are things to look out for. These are things you shouldn't tolerate. If you take one today, you'll take three tomorrow. So when you see the signs, speak to someone who can help you. You know, sometimes even when there are no signs, I've seen relationships where there are no signs and someone feels she's saying something because it's not going her way. So when you feel you're seeing the signs, look for someone you can discuss this with, someone that would genuinely care and advise you accordingly or help you seek better help if they're not in a position to advise you. And my advice is don't always go to someone that has been in an abusive relationship, especially those that haven't worked out. They will never advise you right. They'll tell you to endure. He will change, pray about it. Okay, um, as you were speaking, something crossed my mind. And I just want to quickly say before I, before I now uh, respond to the things that I noted, don't keep secrets, please. Don't keep secrets if you're being abused. Do not keep it a secret. Do not listen to, I'm gonna change. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I won't do it again. Start first by sharing it with other people, right? So that other people can start thinking about how to help you. And this is for both men and women. But I know that men will find it more difficult because they don't want to um, be vulnerable to share that they're being abused by a woman. Uh, okay, are you raising your hand or is it this, this thing is shaking? I can't really see. Uh, uh, it's still shaking. Yes. Are you saying, why are you raising your hand? No, no, no. I just okay. moved. Uh, I just moved. All right. So I think, I love what you said about okay. teaching the kids from the time they're young to be conscious of the fact that you can love someone and still be able to see through their BS, right? And that will start by us when we talk about our family members, you know, like if somebody is, is doing, we should, we should call their, 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 call out their crap. Like, because I know that sometimes in my family, somebody's doing something and some people just want to pretend that nothing is happening because we feel like we regard that person too much. We want to be like, um, Oh, they are, they are too this or that, they are too important for us to, no, no, no. If somebody is doing BS, we are going to call out the BS and still let the kids know we're not loving them less unless we are. We still love them, but this is BS and it needs to not be tolerated. So we can start by that because if we don't show them that, then it's like, for some people who are very close to me, I can ignore when they're misbehaving. And that's how we teach people to tolerate and accept abuse. Okay, so if you're young and you don't learn this early, when are you going to learn it? Because everything we do, a habits and a lifestyle, and you cannot expect that are going to be different in their relationships from the way that they are in the family relationships. So whatever we're doing with our family that we're going to do outside, I think. So now we bring into two things. So Aki, you said if someone loves you, they're never going to raise their hands on you. So why don't we, and then, um, their dating doesn't necessarily lead to marriage. But I think that there are two fundamental issues here. Perhaps we need to redefine love because sometimes I hear 
a man says he loves his wife, but he's still, he's cheating. But no, he, he actually loves his wife, but he's cheating. You know? So these are things that are confusing. And I can't see how that makes any sense. You cannot be cheating on someone that you love. It makes no sense. What it means is that maybe your definition of love has to, you have to tell us your own definition. That, that, right? that's, what exactly. I, that, that, that's what I wanted to say. See, mm. we're, we're sorry to say that in Africa, we have a different definition of love. Thank you. And, and um, Thank you. definition of love does not have anything to do with ethnic groups or, or race or whatever. Love is love. There are certain things, if you love, not even someone, if you love something, we are not even talking about someone now. If you love something, you protect there are, it. There are certain things you would not do towards that thing. You protect it. Okay. Yeah. So if you love someone, which also applies that if you love someone, there are certain things you would not do towards that person. And one of the things is harm the person, whether physically, emotionally, or psychologically. Or physically. Or yeah, or, or at least you at least you do your because I know that people harm other people, people they love sometimes psychologically by their words without really necessarily knowing it. But going the the physical one is the more evident and more vocal in terms of impact. Do you understand? So that one is something you can control, except you choose not to control it. But what I what I want to say to people is that, like the title of the of the of, of this episode says, reality versus delusion. In every situation you find yourself, in every situation you find yourself, you must you must look at your the reality of your relationship and compare it to the reality that should be. Do you get Not the reality that you are hoping yes, for? You must have an idea of what what okay. Let me give you an example. What a mar what a marriage is supposed to be, what a relationship is supposed to be. You must tell yourself, is it a place where I should be slapped? It should be, it should, it should, it, should, it, should it be a place where I should be kicked? So if you come to that realization, you will know that there will be no illusions. You hmm. will know that, yeah, this is the reality of what I'm supposed to be in. But th this is the reality of... <laughs> of what I have. What I, what I have right now. Of what I mean. <laughs> of what, I mean. what I'm hoping for. There, there, there are three things. Yeah, what I'm yeah. Hoping for. So, so you must know. And if there's no feasible way of getting to where you are going based on the reaction of the other person or the behavior of the other person, then you, you should, for the sake of your life, because life is sacred. Do you understand? Because majority of all these abuse and everything, they actually lead to death or being maimed or being incapacitated for life. For Even people. if you are okay, you you are sick inside. Actually, this is how people develop cancers, and people yeah. don't know. It. So 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 a lot of so a lot of the time, people should know that their life is more important than anything they are involved in, whether it be it money making, be it, whether it be it in the relationship, whether marriage. Your life is only those who are in, who are alive that can enjoy the benefit of those three things that I've mentioned. So exactly. that that's my take. Yeah. But I think that one of the biggest um, problems again is, you know, I wanted to say, so we need to redefine what is the meaning, what is the true meaning of love, one. Yeah. And I think you've done justice to that by saying, if this is something that loves, some, someone that loves something, you will protect it and you will not maltreat it, you will not treat it wrong. So, yeah. I mean, that's basic. You don't need to wrap, wrap your head around, but this person uh, loves me and uh, I'll tell you what, I had an experience. This is what taught me this. I had an experience when I was a child, you know, with a family member who, you know, that people that you, sh you should be able to demand love from. I should yeah. be able to demand love from my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, yeah. <laughs> and even my cousins. Yeah. But if I have a family member from whom I'm supposed to, or my aunt or my uncle, and I know that you are supposed to love me, right? Yeah. I spent my time racking my brain. Is this love? Is this not love? Is it? Do you know? I spent my time. At, I would not sleep for nights. And then I finally said to myself, "No, obviously this is not love. You know, there cannot be love here if I have to be questioning myself back and forth, back and forth, back and forth." Yeah. And so, I mean, you just close it. Yeah. Close that box. Know that there is no love there. Walk away from it. If there is love there, 
that sister, mother, brother, whoever it is, is going to come back, right? Yeah. If you walk away from it and they don't come back, that's a closed chapter. It, was, it never was. It wasn't, for whatever reason. Yeah. That's the closed chapter. So that you stop having to question yourself and go back and forth and stay in abuse, right? So that's one thing. Now, secondly, I think we need to, we need to, oh, and somebody watching will say, what, what are you talking about? How can a mother or how can a father but How can a sister? Because I added those ones. They are happening to people. If you don't know and it hasn't happened to you, I okay. can tell abuse, you. Abuse, abuse. I will tell you it, it, it happens. Okay? Well, All right. I, 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 I think, I think um, we don't need to redefine love. Love is love. Love has its qualities. No, because some people, think, no, some people want to do that because they, they just want to have a space to accept this person to continue to you know, trying to, 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 to justify, trying to justify. But I feel, but I feel that um, when we, we, someone might love us, but has his own expression, it might not necessarily be in physical abuse, but people express love within the boundaries of what they know love to be. That's fine. That's as long as it's personal, that's, that's their personal definition. And most times we lay on people the burden of what they don't know, you know, we are expectant of this level of acceptance of love from them and they don't know it. You actually can't give what you don't have, you know, yeah. in the errors of the generation of our parents, their love definition is read your books, be a good child, wash the plates, sweep the compound, do this, do that, do that. It's, it's love is related to physical hand work hard work, you know, do this, read test your exams. When you're not passing exams, they don't love you less, but it looks like they verbally abuse you more or flog you, physically abuse you. You know, they, they have their own system. But that is what they know love is. I'm trying to make you the best person. I'm trying to mold you. And I think sometimes we as children, I had that, that, that issue as a child. At a point, I had a family member that I was looking at and I felt, you know, this person doesn't love me at all. You know, I have six siblings and I felt I was the most disliked and I started looking for validation. I did everything I could to be accepted. But now that I'm grown, I, it got to a point that we had a, a, just a little chat and I realized that this person has always loved me and showed me in their own way. And maybe the image I have in my head, what formed that image? Probably novels, probably movies probably one or two other families that I looked at and I felt, you know, they were a perfect image for me. I was looking, hoping this person becomes that person, but that's not right. They have their own definition. And I think as kids at a time, we just tend to deviate. We're looking for so much more than they can give. Okay. That's the truth, okay. I, I understand. I understand where AC is coming from. Yeah. Uh, but, but what I want to say in final, uh, well, not in finality, but in, in contribution is that there's no definition of love that involves i'm not talking about parents maybe disciplining their children once in a while because even even when you beat a child all the time that's abuse that's not love that's abuse i'm not talking about uh, parents who spank their children once in a while you understand maybe after talking and talking and talking and everything i don't have i don't believe in sparing the rod but when you start to be the child for every single thing the child does, that's abuse. That's abuse. So, but what I'm trying to say is that there's no definition of love that includes in any way, in any dictionary, <laughs> in any that includes physical abuse. That's what I'm trying to say. So, even if you there, of, of, obviously there are childhood, uh, childhood uh, uh, fantasies and childhood uh, conception of what right. love is you understand me you maybe you if a, a an elder or somebody who's older than you shout at you do you get what i'm saying you might feel maybe this person doesn't love me but well basically we are now talking about mature mindsets those who are matured you understand me we're not talking about childhood fantasies or whatever but mature you understand and so there's no mature definition of love that that could ever include physical abuse there's no, I don't think there right. is, except yeah. is the person is under one illusion or the other. Yeah, and so I think that that should be clear enough. You know, the reason why I brought up the childhood thing is because when somebody has not learned from young enough, 
that this isn't love, you know? When they grow up, they, they haven't made a habit of, you know, knowing and refusing something that is negative for them. Yeah. If you don't make a habit of something, it just yeah. becomes more difficult. If you make a habit of it, it becomes easy for you to recognize and yeah. easy for you to know and live in something that is better for you versus yeah. accepting something that's wrong for you. Yeah. And I mean, people, we need to make a habit of trusting our senses. What am I seeing? What am I hearing? What am I smelling? You know, that's why I said, like the last time I said, when you bring up a kid, do not lie to your child who is crying when you're stepping out and say, oh, I'm not going out. I'm just, I'm just going to. And then you go out. Teach your child to not trust their senses, right? Yeah. And and the, the longer you are able to trust your senses, the better you are able to make judgments when you're older, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's, that's there's, okay. Something, there's something I wanted to chip in, and I've been trying to remember since uh, we started. And that's the fact that because someone, I don't know whether it was AZ or you, that spoke about uh, the activity, uh, gender, gender stuff, uh, those proponents of gender, uh, gender, gender violence. Yeah. What I wanted to say is that there seemed to be uh, too much concentration on the female gender. You understand me? Yeah. Me, right? Yeah, yeah. What actually what the society needs to do is to focus more on the male gender. I think because there's so much concentration on the female gender that because parents, families are not raising good sons anymore. Yes, we had that discussion. Someone said that like an hour ago. Yeah, okay. parents are not they are not raising because if you raise your son to be violent towards the opposite sex or towards their friends, or towards their partner, then ultimately that person will not see anything in um, um, uh, emitting violence against uh, their, their spouse or their loved one or whatever. So yeah. the focus will actually shift a little. Yeah, they can yes. really that focus on you know, educating the, the girls. female. Yes. Yeah, but the, the more work, more work needs to be done in the area the of perpetrators the, yes, yes yes because if you don't raise your son the proper way the, there's a likelihood because all especially in the african society where there's more like a pseudo male dominance in majority yes. of things in marriage in relationships even in the office and everything in everything there's a there's a carryover into their yes. lives and if you do not caution, caution them and raise them properly we will keep having a preponderance of this uh, of this situation in our society. That's that's just uh, that's a very valid point. Very great point. Yes, we are exactly. A lot of, we are putting a lot of effort on attention, people, telling on people how, mm -hmm. yes, how to protect herself and all that without teaching how is she going to protect herself if every man in this place, every man in our village is like this. So yeah. it means that at the end of the day, okay, I know how to protect myself, but there is no man for me to even, there's no man that is found worthy. Yeah. Right. So yeah, so the guys need to now okay, that's great. So then I wanted to also talk about definition of dating. I think this is what I've been thinking that are we not misdefining dating? You know, because dating um shouldn't are we doing the right thing? You you start with this person and then you just feel as if yeah, we're dating, we're dating. Should we not do a lot of pre-qualifying before we even decide that we're coupling up and dating somebody before we even get to the point of saying we're dating somebody is it not better that we now preach to slow everything down slow everything down meet somebody you think i think i like this person i meet with him or i meet with her and i spend time with her or with him i spend time with this person over a longer period of time in in friendship and in fact I, don't, I shouldn't even have to call it friendship. People be dating, but the thing is because people are, 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 are doing dating as if they were married, right? That's what I think. You're doing, you're converting the period that you're supposed to be dating someone into, so something other, that, yeah. into something that is now stronger than it ought to be instead of it being a period where you are learning about who that person is. So perhaps it would be better to just talk about friendships now. 
perhaps we should leave dating until we're sure that we have better that this person is right for us to have a relationship with and to also preach to our young ones let's not be in too much of a hurry to to decide that we now love somebody right why don't we instead um let them, qualify. Even, huh? let them qualify for yeah and even know. the way that we say that we love someone how about the way we approach it mm. why don't we instead look out for because if you do it this way it might it might be easier for you to spot that you shouldn't be in a relationship with this person if you look at it like this if i love you right let me say now it is um me and this guy that i see and i think that i i love him why don't i look at what is best for him if i'm looking at what is best for him if this guy is someone who's always getting obsessed with me and he's always getting aggressive with me if i'm thinking of what's best for him my brain will actually tell me that this is not even good for him right yeah, if, I, if i keep upsetting him yeah it's not even good for him so yeah. instead of me to focus on the fact that i love him and i want him for myself why don't i think about something is happening here that is not good for him I'm i don't think it's going to be yeah. it's like i'm doing too much Reva too. reverse reverse psychology it's like reverse, reverse. Yeah, yeah because reverse if i think psychology. about it i feel that a lot of our problems are um a lot of our problems can be handled if we do a little bit of a reverse thing reverse and if we're thing. sincere to ourselves yeah if we're, because that it will be easier when i think about doing things for my sister or for my for my loved ones you know i can be in a relationship where i'm being maltreated but if you do it to my sister <laughs> or to my child right then you will see yeah. that i'm a lioness right so yeah so what so maybe we can do this think about this person instead of because it's a little selfish when we say we love most of the time we're really being selfish in, in what we're doing and saying that it's love yeah. most of the time we're thinking about the way we feel about it and we yeah. want it so we want to make sure that we make we do everything to make it happen but yeah. if you're thinking about that person this person is going to end up being someone who lives a life where they are abused right so why don't i just let him be mm. people are mm -hmm. more concerned about uh, being the victim than also because that's another perspective they are concerned about want, not wanting to be a victim uh but meanwhile yeah. they actually uh i'm trying to use the right word they are actually the source code yeah. for the behavior yeah the enablers the yeah. enablers even even though it does not justify violence because no, so, even even if somebody is a source code for violence you as a human being can choose not to be violent because you know that it's not the right way to be rather you should leave the relationship rather than resorting to violence even if you know that somebody is a consistent source code for violence well, by source code i mean an engenderer of that situation you know some people are actually engenders of situations like that either yeah. through their through their characters through the way they speak being, yeah being verbally be, being verbally abusive and so many other things but no matter what happens I, I am the, someone who maintains the fact that no matter the situation, when it comes to relationships, it should never degenerate into physical abuse. Yeah. In fact, the bottom line is respect. Because if yeah. you're with someone who you respect or someone who respects you, we're not even talking about any type of abuse, before, not to talk of even physical. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think that um, one of the things that we should know and teach the young ones is love can never go without respect. Yeah. If any, they have to go hand in hand, right? If you get love and if, and you don't feel that the respect is there, then it's not, um, it's a, it's, it's a, a stop sign. It's actually a stop sign. Yeah. You cannot go ahead and go mutual as well. Yes. Yeah. Because most ahead. most times some people demand respect and they don't give it. Respect is not demanded. Most times. Yes. Yeah, some people demand respect, they don't give it. Oh, okay. You know, okay. You, yeah. So it, it's it, respect should be mutual. You know, you ask for what you give. Don't ask for more than you can give. All right. So um maybe we've done I'm just going to recap. So start young, start to teach young. 
and um, remember that. Oh, one other thing I forgot to say. Everyone, one thing that everyone can, we can all do to help ourselves is whatever I don't want done to me, I won't do to the next person. Yeah. And I exactly. demand, I demand the same from the next person. Whatever they're yeah. doing to me should not be something that I can do to them. Once that um, so. exists, once that exists, then this is not balanced and this is wrong. And we need to, we need to um, go back to the drawing work. Go back to the drawing work. <laughs> and we shouldn't be scared of taking a walk. And let me not even say take a walk because what you can do is we can withdraw. Once you withdraw from a situation, see, whatever the situation, once you withdraw from it and just take a back seat, you'll be able to see more clearly. You know, you'll be able to see where the where there are errors. But if you don't withdraw it, you stay there and you keep on trying to solve it. There will be things in your blind spots that you won't see. So that's I, one thing. I also wanted to chip in something finally so that I don't take our time. Uh, for people who are already in, because we're talking to different people now, those who are open to, those who are already in need, those who are already in, in maybe in marriages. If you feel that uh, you are being abused in a relationship and you don't want to end the relationship, first of all, the first thing to do is you must escalate. Don't keep quiet. Escalate that situation to stakeholders in that relationship. There are every, in a marriage, there are stakeholders. The, the families, the families are stakeholders. Your brothers and sisters on both sides are stakeholders. Elders in your families are stakeholders. We have to you, talk about this separately because this yeah, is I know. Point. First of all, escalate. You understand? Don't keep quiet. Like, like you said, Uzo, earlier. Do not keep quiet. Because Esc some people actually sh um, shield their victims from everybody else, so they're not even able to. No, escalate. <laughs> if someone is abusing you, escalate. Weigh your realities. Don't live in, don't live a del uh, delusive life. See your reality for, that's your reality at that point. You are being abused. Accept it and escalate so that something can be done. All right. Otherwise, you're going to be there for, you think it's a... Uh, you might lose your life even in the process. One year, two years. Before you know what's happening, you are there for 10 years. And, and you, you become in shadow. You're stuck. And, you, and, and you're stuck. Yeah. The longer yeah. you stay in, the longer you stay in, in what you shouldn't be, in, the, the harder it will be to come out because you are investing more and more, and yeah. you want yes. your return on your investment. I keep saying, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think um we will end this one now here, and then we will talk about the the um reality versus delusions. Those kids that killed that man and. It looks as if nothing had happened. Izzy, did you see that video? I couldn't watch it till the end. Okay. I started watching it. I saw the way they were speaking, and I gave up. Okay, I'll I'll stop. We'll stop this one now. <laughs> we'll, go the, we'll go on to that one. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, thanks for yeah. So, thank you for being with us on the Astral Lounge on this episode. Hey guys, we're gonna we're gonna end and go on to our next topic.